Hello, everybody. We're here today with Peter Mulligan, the director of the upcoming Olmark Christmas movie, A Cozy Christmas Inn. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. And as you can see, it, I'm, I'm getting ready for a little cozy Christmas uh, myself here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and tell us a bit, what's been the main element in the characters and the story of this movie that fascinates you the most and drew you to join this, this project? Um, well, it is a continuation uh, of a film that we did uh, a couple of years ago called Scripts Under Wraps. And I wanted to revisit the town of Garland, which is what we set up in Christmas Under Wraps, and go back and kind of check in with everybody and see how they've been doing. And so um, this movie provided the opportunity to go back to Garland. Um, we have a new, a new protagonist, but we get to check in with a lot of our old friends and visit some of the old locations. And it's kind of like a, 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 you're going home again, if you will. You know, so I was uh, just excited uh, by the idea of kind of checking in with these people, you know, uh, uh, five or six years later to see, you know, what, what's been going on, how holiday shipping is going. And, you know, obviously uh, uh, Santa Claus, uh, the, you know, is a secret, uh, you know, toy company and all that. So um, that was primarily why I was excited to do this. Yeah. And... As we know quite well so far, um, Hallmark movies and, and shows in general always feature some well-shaped characters and relatable storylines for the audience. Um, in your opinion, is there any particular character um, in, in the movie that you can relate to on a personal level? Um, I try to relate to a little bit of everybody. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I find that the best way to approach any character, protagonist, antagonist, love interest, what have you, is is to find something within yourself as the creator. Uh, uh, in this case, writing the story and, and directing the film, um, the script was written by uh, uh, Jennifer uh, Notice, who did the uh, original. Um, but to, to find uh, just those little elements that remind me of myself. So, you know, frequently uh, a lot of my characters tend to be fish out of water because, um, you know, being from, you know, a relatively small town in Massachusetts and then moving first to New York City and then to Los Angeles, you know, I certainly know what it's like to, to make that journey myself. And so uh, I can relate to that. I can relate to the culture shock um of, of being in those in, in environments and so you know this is this is like taking that and, and reversing it you know and i think a lot of times what happens is you know we we leave our small town and then when we go back it's like having a fresh eye on yeah. things but we have a, we have a character who you know is going to this small town and kind of reconnects with the small town girl that she used to be you know uh very much in that way Um, the same kind of a thing, have um, uh, a son who is sort of being pressured to, to follow in his father's footsteps and wanting to set out to do his own thing. You know, I never wanted to do what my dad did. I never expressed, you know, any interest. And I can relate to wanting to do something completely different. I mean, completely different and, and just, you know, be, create my own opportunities away from, you know, everything that he was working on and, and doing, um, you know, and just being my own person. And, and those, are, those are basically the two main characters of this film. Yeah. And on the directing level, what's been the biggest challenge for you in directing this movie? Um, I have to tell you, one of the interesting things about it is with, for the first time, we're actually shooting a Christmas movie at Christmas time. And we were shooting in a, in a, in a really tiny town in, in Utah. Um, the pandemic was still kind of going on at the time, still is. But, you know, it was, you know, we were still very much aware of it and, and knew we needed to be careful. Um, we still kept the crew side phone, whatever. And what we ended up doing was taking over this hotel where we literally, the entire cast and crew stayed there. We controlled the whole hotel. Everybody there was up with, with the production. 
And we also filmed a lot of the movie there. The movie takes place in, a, in, a, in an inn. So, um, you know, we, we kind of stayed in this little bubble, um, but about halfway through the shoot, there, there was a significant snowfall. And so for wow. and it got, it, the temperature dropped rapidly. So we, you know, we went from shooting, oh, you know, it's nice and 50, 55 degrees out to 25. And, oh and, and shooting in, in, in falling snow and, and quickly having to pivot and change our schedule at a moment's notice, uh, both to take advantage of the snowfall and then also to keep the cast too comfortable when the cold got too much. We couldn't do entire days of exterior filming, you know, you'd, you'd be freezing, you know, and two hours into the day. So uh, it was really dealing with a new climate uh, for me that made this one, you know, from a production standpoint, unique. Yeah, definitely. It, w- it would definitely be th- the biggest challenge, I mean, for, for anyone working on a movie to 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 see the schedule, like, break down like this by mm-hmm. the weather. Yeah, for and... the first time, I mean, the snow is real. We, you know, the, the snow that you see falling is, is yeah. real. <laughs> it's not, uh, not a special effect. And to all the fans that are looking forward to to watching A Cozy Christmas in, how would you describe the movie in like using three words? Three words. Mm. Romance during holidays. Okay. And what can you tease about uh, the, the story in general, the, the development of the character's relationship throughout the, the whole movie? Well, um, so, so like I, I said earlier, you have, you have a, 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 a big city girl that goes to a small town and she's there um, on business. But it turns out that the inn that she's being sent to basically purchase for her boss is owned by an ex-boyfriend. So now she is, uh, you know, by circumstances, pitted against someone that she used to be very close with. And the question is, well, you know, will they become close again? Um, you know, uh, uh, in their love-hate relationship, how much is love and how much is hate? <laughs> um, and also, how does his own uh you know his 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 endeavors to to stand apart from his father who would love nothing more for him to sell her the inn and join him in his family business you know um how does her presence there impact his relationship with his family and his own complicated you know journey which is trying to be his own person um So as you can see, there's like the, the, the primary relationship ends up kind of becoming a, 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 a flashpoint for a number of different conflicts, yeah. um, both romantic, uh, financial, um, career, etc. Yeah, it will be really interesting to, to see how yeah. the whole thing will, will play yeah. out in the movie. <laughs> no, And... it, 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 Jennifer did a great job with the script. And it just really, it works on all levels, I think. Yeah, definitely. And talking about the environment on set, mm-hmm. uh, how would you describe your experience working with Jody and David and the whole crew? And mm-hmm. is there any, any fun anecdotes that you can share with us? Fun anecdotes? Well, it was, inter- it was very interesting because, like I said, we were sort of we were all together staying you know, living, shooting, everything all in one kind of place, um, that it really was like a, 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 a Christmas filmmaking retreat, if you will. You know, um, we were we were all the way to, we, we, we ate all our meals together, we hung out together, we worked together, then we, you know, we'd get together and have dinner together after. So it was really a great camaraderie that we that, that we all had. Um, Jody is fantastic. I, I was working with her for the first time and, you know, just fit right in with the cast and crew. Um, you know, we were still in touch. We still we we still 
text and 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 chat to give me a hard time because I still haven't watched the Dark Crystal yet. Um, but uh, uh, it's 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 she she's fantastic. And David, I've known for a long time. He was um uh, he was actually in the first film that um the company that I work with hybrid um when we when we sort of started to form we did a quick movie called Quick Proposal um and it was one of my first films as a producer and David was the star of that and that was back in, in I think around 2008 um so I've known him for quite a while and um he was in the second film I ever directed um so I, I called Wishes of Christmas. So I just love David, love working with him. Um, true story, his wife is in the movie. So we got to, we got, to, you know, it was a real family environment. He brought, all, you know, he brought the family with him and, and we had yeah, the wife and, and, and the daughter. It was just a, a, such a great experience. That, as you said before, that makes the, the, this movie all, even more special. I think mm -hmm. to make absolutely, uh, and I think it translates. Like when you when you see it on screen, it's there. You you yeah. you feel it, and and um, yeah, I, I feel very lucky to have had the opportunity. Yeah, that that's beautiful to hear. And um, now a fun question that we always ask to the people we're interviewing, and considering we're talking about a cozy Christmas in it's only cozy Christmas in universe. <laughs> If you can, if you could choose one character um, in the movie uh, that you would have loved to play, if you were an actor, or mm. a, a, any character that, that would be fun in your opinion, which one would you choose and why? You know, I think I would choose uh, uh, the character played by Vivica Fox um, because it's such a fun. It's a fun role. She is a sort of self-absorbed business person who is just all about the deal. And it's just, she just has so much fun with it. And, and, you know, we have, we have Jody and David bringing the heart and, 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 you know, Vivica's providing the, the pressure for Jody yeah. to succeed, but she's just having, you know, she has so much fun, you know, being that delicious uh, 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 you know, Miranda Priestly kind <laughs> of, you know, high powered woman, you know, uh, business, you know, tycoon. Um, I just think that would be a lot of fun to play something like that because that's not at all who I am. Um, so I, I, I would love to, you know, if, if, if I would look at hey, what would be interesting it would be to play somebody who's least like me. <laughs> and, um, I just I just saw how much fun she was having and she just came up with so many little moments and it's just uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. And throwing back instead to the origins of your career as a director, mm -hmm. how did the passion for directing come about in your life? Um, I have always been obsessed with movies. Always, always, always obsessed with movies. And so um for, for me, it was about, um, uh, you know, finding a way into the industry that allowed me to not only embrace my love of, of film, but also storytelling. And so um, I started I started as a writer and then, you know, worked my way to directing, but I always wanted to direct. And I just love the idea of telling stories visually and uh, taking the audience on a journey. You know, whether whether it's a journey to Alaska in this film or it's a journey. Um, yeah, you know, I've done I've done film, you know, horror films. You, you, you know, you take you know, you just you just taking the, the characters on a on a, on a you know a, a very intense adventure. Um, so I, I just I enjoy just transporting the audience to a different that's beautiful. And if you had to give some advice to to people who want to pursue a directing career, what mm -hmm. kind of advice would you give them? Well, I think the advantage of now versus when I started. I mean, when I when I was first getting into this, you know, we had camcorders, but 
you know, now every every computer almost comes with some kind of rudimentary video software editing thing. There's lots of, you know, yeah, there's the big boys, you yeah, have and whatnot, but you know, you can get relatively inexpensively um, you know, video editing uh software. You know, everyone's phone can record, you know, video, if not even 4K yeah. video, you know. So I mean we're walking around with the tools you know, if you want to be shooting and you want to be directing, do it and practice and, you know, get your friends together and make little shorts just like I used to. I remember, you know, my family got the old VHS camcorder. I was making little videos with my brother and, you know, he'd play both parts and I'd shoot one side and he'd be wearing one outfit and we'd turn the camera around. He'd change it. Up. You know, there was no editing back then. We had to do it all on camera, you know, and just ping pong back and forth. And the next thing you know, you had a scene. Um, you know, and that's, that's now it's so easy to do that, to get the practice and the hands on and also just watch movies and really watch them and really pay attention to blocking. I mean, if you look at a movie like Back to the Future, you know, look at the way that the mechas construct the scene where characters are constantly kind of, you know, it's not just shot, reverse shot. The, the camera becomes, you know, the camera moves to a scene, the shots evolve. You know, Michael D. Fox will walk forward and say a line, and then he'll turn around and walk back, and then Crispin Glover will walk up and say a line. And just the way the blocking, you know, works in the scene, so you don't have to just cover, 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 cover. You know, pay attention to some of these techniques. And and I think you'll, you know, if, 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 if it's part of you and it's part of your passion, you know, You'll you'll fall in love with just all of the tools that we have to to tell stories visually. Definitely, and um, that's really a beautiful answer. I think that many many of our readers, once uh, who are young directors, will will be inspired by by what you said. Mm -hmm. And that's all for us. Thank you so much, Peter, for for joining us. It's been thank a pleasure you. for me to to chat with you. And all right, thank you. The, uh, let's remind people that A Cozy Christmas Scene airs October 28th on Allmark Channel. And let's tune in. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. -bye.